so here we are in uh, Bill's lounge area and I'm just swinging over by the front of the house here and you can see all this uh, finished bench work and uh, the railroad going in through under the stairs. Now you might think this is uh, Montrose but it really isn't. Where it is actually located is under here on a different level. And you can see down in here there's a bit of rolling stock here that I goes am, into the under wall. the stairs in the Montrose staging yard. And as you can see, it's uh, quite large. It's uh, four tracks wide here, and uh, there's some trains that are staged to come onto the layout. And as it proceeds down, we have a bit of a ladder, and it runs along way down in the back there. There's a Y, and I guess uh, from a staging perspective, Bill, you're, uh, you can do some quick changes here and get some trains going at Durango <laughs> staging down there. Actually everything has to be done before the op session because yeah. it's a difficult area to work, to work. Sure. So what I have on this side is I have the outbound trains to Ridgeway. Yes. And on the opposite side that's Durango. Yeah. So that train coming out of Durango going into Rico is over there. Yeah. And I also have the passenger train that has to come out also. Uh -huh. And I have an engine staging yard where I get rid of surplus engines just so I can aggravate the crew. Sure, why not? But this is uh, quite a nice little spot in the sense of it's uh, hidden from the reality that you built up, up, up top. But it never has a really good strong uh, functional uh, aspect in terms of keeping the trains running properly in an op session. Unfortunately, the staging yards are an afterthought. Yeah. We got the layout going along, and all of a sudden we realized, holy cow, where are we going? We yeah. can't just run into a yard and stop, because trains don't do that. Yeah. They come in and they go on to other places. So a train coming into Durango can send cars to east to Chama and Alamosa or south to Farmington mm -hmm. or up the Silverton Branch. And trains coming into Montrose will go off to Montrose uh, can go east to Gunnison and east again to Salida. Okay. So yeah. a car can leave here and disappear for several weeks before it comes back. Mm -hmm. So now you, you, this is one of your afterthoughts, but with your new afterthought in the context of a branch, that means that you're probably operating spaces that are either like this or in worse circumstances. Well, certainly the layout for the installation of the URA branch is uh, challenging to say the least. Yeah. You're sort of looking at this type of arrangement. Yeah. All right, so you'll have your finished scenery here. Yeah. Plus you'll have your operating session here. Uh huh. Fortunately, it's small trains, small engines, and not very busy, so it should work out not too bad. And an extra wheelie chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that makes it easy to swing around. Down and run trains. Yeah, this is very cool. Okay, so uh, let's uh, follow the, the flow of traffic from uh, Montrose to URA. Yep. The operating idea here is these trains come from Montrose uh, into the layout and travel along here just below the bench work and under the town of Brown and proceeds around and suddenly emerges out of a tunnel, a tunnel location. I'll just show you here. And you can see it's on a different level. And so the trains first appear on the railroad at this point and proceed along now in the actual scenic part of the layout up towards the town of Ridgeway. And this is all part of the Montrose to Ridgeway through to URA branch. So we've been up in this area before and I can see that uh, Bill you've been working on some new trees here for I guess your new area or someplace on the layout. You got some spirea on the go? Yeah that's some stuff I did years ago. Uh, yeah. The trouble is it dries out and becomes very brittle. Yeah. So I discovered by chance one day if you uh, hit it with wet water. Yeah from a spray bomb and then spray it again quite heavily with thin white or yellow glue Yes, it makes the trees much more durable and easier to work with. Here's something you might want to try. You get a, a spray can, one of those spray bombs of uh, medium yellow paint and just dust it over the top yep. and what it'll do is it'll brighten the tops of the branches as if there's sunlight shining on it 
and it won't look too yellow it will actually mix with the ground foams that are on there and just make a lighter form of green and that also will help everything adhere and I see you've got uh, some other trees here. These ones look like they're uh, manufactured. Yeah, they're made by a local modeler. Uh, he turns them up. Yeah, that's Gaston Moreau, correct? Yeah, Gaston Moreau. Yeah. Yeah. And he turns them out whatever size you want it. Yeah, look we it. talked about the size I wanted. We talked about the color as I, I was looking for. And, sure. Uh, he's done a very good job. There's uh, several hundred of them on the layout. Yeah. That's pretty much what's left of my last order. So when you're doing trees like that, and there's a price tag obviously associated with them, what does it cost per tree roughly for the big ones, let's say? Well, the say? big ones are about a buck, buck and a half. Buck That's and not bad. Well, the thing is, Christopher, over the years I have built so many trees, <laughs> I am tired of building trees. Yeah. As J. Francois tells me, I've got uh, 50,000 trees on the layout, and I said, no, Frank, I've only got 49,500. <laughs> My count. <laughs> yeah. And here it looks like you've got your bucket of uh, scenic materials. Well, I'm, as I'm working, the unfortunate thing is I'm running out of places to put things because you yeah. really shouldn't put scenery materials on, on finished parts of the layout. Sure. This is not really finished yet, so I can get away with that. Yeah. yeah I, I haven't quite finished the Ridgeway yard from when I started it last year. I just sort of burned out for yeah. almost two years. Didn't do anything on the layout. That's a nice reddish soil. I haven't seen that uh, yeah. available commercially. <laughs> that comes from Colorado. I bet it does, yeah. yeah. That's great looking stuff. It almost looks like PEI dirt. Uh, I had some PEI dirt and there's a surprisingly different yeah, it's colored. a little bit redder, isn't it's it? It's way too red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see here you got some new uh, switch motors. I don't think I've seen that type before. Those are the switch motors I was using to power my three-way switches in Rico. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they're not quite reliable enough to, to survive an operating session. Sure. And they just weren't standing up to being used again and again and again over a two-hour yeah. period. So what kind do you recommend? Well, I'm trying the Grizzly Mountain uh, servo type switch machines. Yeah. Uh, they have not seen an operating session yet, right. but they seem to be pretty good. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. know after a couple of operating sessions whether mm -hmm. they're going to stand up. So getting back to our story here, we're sitting in Ridgeway, and it's a big, big honking yard as I can see here. So you got trains coming in from Montrose. Yeah, so the train coming from Montrose is right now running on the DNRGW branch line from right. Montrose to Uric. Yeah. This is an interchange track between the Rio Grande Southern and the Rio Grande. Right. So generally what we do is outbound cars going to Montrose will be set out here. Yes. Any other cars are stored in the yard. So trains coming in from Montrose that are going to Ure, would they uh, come off the train or would they just stay on the train? In which sense? Well, uh, is there a specific train, I guess, that's assigned? Well, right, right now I'm running one train. Okay. And I'm calling it the Montrose Ure turn. Okay. But it's usually powered by a K-27. Right. Uh, K-27s didn't run to your way. They would have yeah. a tendency to fall off the track. So you'd have a power change here. No, what I'm doing is the train terminates here. Oh. Any car is going to your way, the yard switcher just pushes them up on the short stub of the branch underneath the bridge. Uh -huh. And they sit there till the next off session and then come back. Okay. So right now the train basically runs Montrose to Ridgeway. Yeah. With a side trip to Ure. What will happen when the URA branch is running, that train, as it stands now, will run strictly Montrose to URA. It yeah. will carry no, uh, sorry, Montrose to Ridgeway, it will carry no URA cars. All right? The URA cars will be handled by the URA train. Right. Which will originate in URA. Right. Come down here to Ridgeway. If it has set outs for Ridge for the RGS, they will be set out by the local switcher. By the local switcher, yeah. And it will not pick up any cars because if we did, the computer would overload the train and it would never run. Okay. On the way out of Montrose, about 45 minutes later, the train will arrive here at Ridgeway. If there are cars at, from the RGS going to Ure. They will be spotted at that far end, of the, the far end of the yard. The train will pick them up and then proceed off to Grandview Mill and Ure. Mm -hmm. The train will not 
bring any cars from Montrose to the RGS for the same reason the computer would just kill it. Yeah. Yeah. The little yeah. C16s and C19s and that just couldn't handle it. So to get my brain wrapped around this, there's obviously, as we discussed before, there's there's power that's assigned in your array. It's it's there. It's part of the, it's where the train originates. It comes basically down into Ridgeway with its loads that it's got from the mines and things like that, and it's dropped here for. It's only the, going to drop off cars here that, that are, are going on to your rest, layout, but and it right. will continue on. And the rest of the train will go to Montrose. Yeah, with the same locomotive and power, and then it'll come back. And it will pick up cars Only cars that are, that are required up the URA branch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well let's uh, go and look at this new mystery area because there's not much space left here. Oh, the, uh, this is far end tight, tight. of the, the Ridgeway yard and you can see that there's the maintenance facility and the uh, turntable and so on. And then we go through a little narrow aisleway here and this is the start of the URA branch, I take it there, Bill. Well, this for now is what I call the URA branch. Yeah. So if there are any cars going to URA, they're just kicked out here, and they usually wind up sitting on the bridge. Yeah. Now I've had to put a plexiglass protector over the bridge because it's such a narrow yeah. aisle. You get the guys working here, and unfortunately, quite a number of them exceed plate C <laughs> by a noticeable amount. Yeah. So it gets a little crowded in here, and you've got guys working up here at Telluride. You've got the outbound mainline freight. You got the outbound ore train, yeah, and then you got the switch crew here building the trains for the next operation because they have to run to Durango, come back, and then build the trains for the next op session. You that also got same. guys from the top coming That's through right. on this yeah, side too, and uh, yeah. so they're going to be moving through, and, and there's some switching that has to be done at this end. Yeah, they're switching this here little at gap. Head, and yeah. they're switching here at. Uh, so at times right. you could have three or four people in this area. Uh, try eight or nine. Yeah. <laughs> It's unfortunate. I'd try as I might yeah. when I was building, I tried to keep the three principal yards apart. Right. But every time I did, I lost too much railroad. And I'm just a little greedy. I wanted railroad. So we're going to move along here, and you're, this is the new where the new add-on is going to come right here, yeah. and it's going to come around and into the uh, area under Lizard Head, I guess. So right? what I'm going to do is here I will complete something like this. Yeah. And then we'll scenic right out of Ridgeway, right through here. Yeah. But this must remain a lift out. Sure. As this, because I need to be able to access my hot water tank. Yeah. And I need to be able to access my vacuum and other crap. Sure. So sure. These have to be remain remain removable. Sure. Why not? Yeah. So. So we so really come through the uh, finished part of the layout. This is the new section in here. Yeah, so what we're here now is we're underneath Lizard Head Y. Right. Lizard Head being 10,250 feet above sea level. Yeah. And the highest point on the RGS. Yes. Now what I've done here is this is where I'm going to build the Grandview Mill. Uh-huh. And there will be the, the mill trestle here. And my yellow water tank is going right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, what will kind of, and really there shouldn't be one there, but as I say, I want a yellow water tank and that's where it's going. Right. So, there will be the tank and some other company facilities. And then the Grandview Mill, which we can show you a photograph of, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It wasn't in existence at this time. But then it's my model. Modeler's railroad. license yeah. again. Yeah. My model railroad, this is what I'm going to do. Right. So eventually this will go out in the back deck and be finished. I'll take the belt sander to some of these rough joints and I'll build all the necessary structure, get it running. Yeah. And then bring it downstairs. Huh. This will be a nice scene. It's going to keep the guys busy. Uh, I suspect there'll be at least two sidings in here, maybe three. Yeah. But the mill sits back here, so the trestle runs here. And the mill goes up like this. Sure. So it's a simple flat roof type structure. Yeah. There will be a siding coming in here, going into the building, and there may be one coming here, whether it goes in or not, I haven't decided yet. When you say the guys, you mean the guy. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a pretty much a one-man operation. Yeah. yeah. But it'll keep them busy for a few hours, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Here, let me just come through here. So, let's have a look from this angle. So we're coming from the other part of the basement. 
this is the area in here. So I haven't done any of the lights down here yet. Right. This is going to require a bit of planning. But I am going to have to fit a light across here to lighten this up. Yeah. And I'll wind up having to fit some lights underneath the upper section of the layout in order to light this. But I also have to make major lighting changes up over top here in order to get more light on Ridgeway, the stock storage, and the other areas around here. It's pretty dark in here. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Those floodlights are not working. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I've got some other ideas. Hopefully they'll be done before the first op session in October. Yeah. Wow, got a lot ahead to do. Well, yeah, but don't forget I was in that two-year slump building airplanes instead of trains. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. There's a holder here, somebody that's uh, built a really nice piece of uh, bench work here. It's not uh, really heavy-duty stuff, but it really does the trick, eh? What's it made from? It's just uh, one by two pine. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a bunch of L girders that were given to me and I took them apart. Yeah. And I also had a bunch of one by two in the back shed that I'd forgot about. Sure. So I, I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. But when you stop and think about it, the structure is going to be screwed to the wall into the studs. Yeah. There'll be a small brace coming out here and there'll be a fascia on it. Sure. You don't need any more. No, you don't. There's one track coming up. There'll be a passing siding here, which I'll use for switching Grandview Mill. Yes. And then there'll be the scenery. And the scenery is all going to be done in styrofoam. Yeah. Drywall cement and drywall tape. So it's going to be really light. Right. And you don't need any more. You don't need to use 4x4s and 10x10s. You can't drive a tank over it. Yeah. So that's all you need. And I'm using up material rather than going out and buying new stuff. Oh, that's great. Oh, this is an awesome idea. So here we are, we're moving along the far wall underneath the layout. As you can see, it's up there above us. I'm down on a little uh, platform chair and uh, the uh, piece of 2x2 two two that's going to support the track frame, the frame, the 2x2 two two frame is going to come along here. And then we start into the section that we saw outside, I guess, eh? That's right. Yeah. So we have two sections of uh open frame bench work that I built to connect the Grandview Mill to the Ure Yard. Yeah. They're simply screwed on the wall. Yeah. With small braces. That's all you need. Sure. The same with the the yard itself. There will be some blocks here to set it on and across here. Yeah. And I have these guys hung down here. Yes. And they'll all rest there. And again I'll just go to diagonal braces. Yes. And it'll be more than strong enough. There was no need to, to build it any, the material any heavier. In fact, if I had used heavier material, I would not have been able to get over the lead to the switching yard for Durango. I see. So, you, as you can see, it's going to be fairly tight. Yeah, well, let's have a look around the corner here so we can see the other side of the yard. So, unit. here we are. We're coming under the layout into the corner now. If I remember rightly, this corner is where the uh, turntable and the engine shed is going to be. This is the engine house turntable shed. And yeah. So the backdrop is going to come here. Right. The engine house will be right here. The turntable will be here. Yeah. And then the first switch will be here. Now all of this is going to be underneath the RGS main line going to Telluride. Yeah. All right. This section here, the back will be resting here with the face here with the backdrop, but the front will e extend past here. So it'll stick out a bit. From that point here to this yeah. point here. That's because I have the depot here, yeah. and I'll have a fair amount of work, plus there's buildings to put in here, so I want it yeah. sticking out rather than having it all underneath. Unfortunately, the rest all disappears under here, so the bottom of it is here. The front of it will come down here on the entrance to the staging yard. Yes. So the staging yard is going to sneak under here, <laughs> and the actual URA switching is going to operate above here. And above this, of course, we've got helium. Right. So it's going to be a rather tight little switching area. This is extraordinary. And the yard is going to end here. Uh-huh. I don't dare go any further. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not a lot of space along no, there. No, no, not a lot of space. So this is going to be quite the install. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to come in in three pieces. So what will happen is I'll install that end of the yard first. Yeah. And then I'll float this section in. And then the rest of it will be all put together as we go along. Yeah. It's amazing. And that's going to 
be it, I guess, eh? Or are you thinking of anything else? There's no room anyway. <laughs> no room. And frankly... Well, what's the size of the basement to start with? Well, it's 30 by 55. Wow. And so I have 500 feet of main line. Yeah. And I have to admit, this is my fourth layout. Yeah. Not counting the two real fair display layouts we built. Mm -hmm. And not counting working on probably a dozen other people's railroads. Yeah. I think I'm layouted out. <laughs> I think I built all the layouts I want to build. Yeah. yeah. No, I want to get this job finished and do some other finishing on the layout. I just play trains and drink beer and have a good time. There we are. Yeah. I'm um, looking forward to participating. It should be great fun. Yeah, I think Look, actually looking forward to seeing this part installed. We'll have to come back and have a look again once you get it down the stairs. Well, I hope to have it operating for the first op session in, uh, in October. Yeah. Uh, don't think it's going to be finished. It's hard to say. But we'll see what happens. So We're I'm, into August, you know. Yeah, I know. I should have started it earlier, but I was still on a airplane binge. There you go. Yeah. Well... Well, thanks for having me by today, and I'm sure the folks will enjoy having a look at what you've been doing. Yes, now they're going to know I am really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We've known that for years, Bill. <laughs>